Meatball rules. The rules of ball and meat. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> must be meat, must be balls. That, that, there you go, we're done. That's a wrap. Meat, take your meat, turn it into a ball. What else do you need? Welcome back to Off Script with Sola. In today's episode, it's gonna be all about balls. <laughs> I'll do that again. Welcome back to Off Script with Sola. Today, it's all about meatballs. I'm gonna show you how to make two meatballs. First, my cod meatballs with turmeric and lots of herbs. Second, my lamb meatballs with lots of warm spices. But I'm also gonna teach you the basics of meatballery. So you can take this recipe off script and ball all of the meats to your heart's content. If you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe and let's get cooking. Yeah, she did it. She'll do anything for a snack. My first meatball, I decided to go with cod. I don't think people think of fish meatballs, but it's a really great way to stretch a pound of fish. Um, we're gonna start by making our panade. Since it's cod, I thought it'd be fun to use oyster crackers. But really, you can use any kind of cracker, breadcrumb. This is a great place to use up any like stale crackers or bread or chips or, yeah, whatever. I'm gonna break it up a little bit with my hands. Now, for the liquid, you can use anything from water to cream to buttermilk. I'm going with milk here. Since we are using cod, it's like naturally a leaner protein. So a little bit of extra richness from the whole milk is gonna be nice. If I was doing a really fatty meat like beef, I might just go with water, you know? The cod could even take some cream. Kind of like go with what you've got, have fun with it. You don't taste the flavor too much of whatever you put in there. So if you're, if you're a plant-based dairy person, just go for that, no problem. And I'm taking a second to massage it together with my hands. You're gonna get to know these meatballs really well. We want to smush it really well so that the crackers can fully absorb the milk. For my lamb meatballs, I'm gonna use Ritz crackers and water because the lamb has so much fat that we don't need any more. We just want moisture. So now that it's sufficiently smushed and looks like baby food, we're gonna set it aside to rest for five minutes so we can make sure the crackers fully hydrate. Next, I'm gonna saute my aromatics. So here I've got some garlic, shallots, and green onion, and I'm gonna saute them just until they're tender in a few tablespoons of butter. The butter is gonna really help add a lot of moisture and flavor. For this meatball, I was really inspired by chaka lavang, which is this catfish braise with a lot of dill and turmeric, and I just really kind of, I love, I love that dish and I wanted to put those flavors into this meatball as much as possible. And I don't make it that much because catfish, where I live, isn't the easiest to find, but with this cod, we're almost there. Okay, so my butter's nice and foamy. I'm gonna add the aromatics. It might seem like a lot of butter, but we need that fat. Fat's flavor, it's gonna be good. I found that if you put raw aromatics into your meatball, it can kind of get a little wet and like fall apart, and it tastes a little bit harsh. These ingredients do a lot better with some direct heat. It's not gonna get that when you just toss it into the meatball. But I am gonna add a few raw aromatics. Here I have ginger, red chili, uh, dill, and cilantro that I'm gonna mix into the meatball mix totally raw because I want like fresh bites of ginger. Think about it, think about what ex meatball experience you want, you know? When you're deciding whether you wanna saute your aromatics or not. And while that does this thing, I'm going to chop my cod. So here I just have some skinless, boneless cod fillets. This could work with any lean white fish, you know, like halibut. I think it'd be really good with shrimp too. And we're just gonna cut it into like quarter inch or you know, as small of a dice as possible. And then I'm gonna go through and run my knife through it. You could also put this in a food processor, but my thing is, if I can avoid plugging something in, I will. I think it's because my last apartment had no outlets. It's like a, it's a Manhattan thing. It's pretty common. I think all of my apartments before this one had no outlets. So I really hesitated to plug things in. Once I get slices, I like to come across and turn them into strips, just like when you're making any kind of like small dice. We go from flat planks into strips, and then we're gonna come across 
and make little pieces. And then I'm gonna just run my knife through that back and forth. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth or um, even or anything like that, but you don't want any huge chunks because it's just gonna make it difficult for the meatball to hold. So nothing bigger than a quarter inch. If there's enough small pieces in the mix, it'll hold the bigger chunks together, but you don't want too many big chunks because it's just gonna kind of fall apart when you go to cook it. Now, this is gonna go into that bowl with the crackers. They have had a second to hang out and it's like totally thickened up and absorbed all of that mixture and it's just like, it looks like a pile of baby food mush. Delicious. You can use any kind of aromatics you want here. Think about, you know, a place you want to go or a dish you really like and like think about the flavors in it and just put it into your meatballs. Why the hell not? No, this isn't chocolavang, but it makes me feel like chocolavang. Into my cod and panade, I'm gonna add my finely minced ginger, chilies, and herbs. You wanna make sure everything is really finely chopped so you don't have like big chunks that you're chewing on. I'm gonna add a couple teaspoons of fish sauce, a teaspoon of turmeric, and a teaspoon of kosher salt. I know that seems like a lot of turmeric, but it's good. It tastes really good in here. My mom gets very upset when a recipe has too much turmeric. She thinks that Americans use too much turmeric, and it's probably true, I don't care. I like it. All right, a little bit of fish sauce. Fish sauce is not gonna make it fishy, it just adds like a really nice depth. We're gonna add an egg to help bind everything. Bloop, uh-oh. My egg cracking skills, they haven't been great lately. But we didn't get any shells in there. Last thing, I'm gonna scrape in my cooked aromatics, and then we're gonna mix it all up. Make sure you get all of that butter. You want that butter. That butter's got a lot of fat in it now too. Okay, so that is hot. So I'm gonna get it started with my spatula just to distribute that heat so it doesn't burn my hands. And then I'm going in with my hands. See how it's like loose right now? It doesn't wanna hold together, right? If you try to cook that, it's gonna completely fall apart. So we're gonna have to knead this for like three to five minutes and it's gonna start to get springy and stick together and totally transform. All right, this is how we do this. Hand in, we get handsy. You can also do this in a mixer with a paddle attachment, but this is fun too. Who doesn't want their fist in a bowl full of cod? Isn't this your dream? Become the mixer. You don't need a mixer, become the mixer. The second one will use the mixer. You can see as I'm mixing it, it's like coming together. It's looking less loose already, but we're not there yet. I feel like too many recipes don't show you this. They just quickly mix everything together and then you have balls. This is the secret that all of the chefs are not telling you to get nice springy texture, but still tender, still moist. It's like, how is that possible? This, you gotta put, you gotta put your back into it. My arm's tired. Yeah. Break. <laughs> a little bit of this really helps bring it together. We're almost there. My arm's so tired. You know, maybe I should have just plugged the mixer in. I don't know why in my head this is easier. Okay, but I think we are there. Take a look. Take a look at how it doesn't look wet. It's this nice cohesive mass and it's gonna only get better as we let it rest. So now I'm gonna transfer it to a container with a tightly fit lid, pop it in the fridge, I think at least 24 hours. I mean, it'll be okay after a few hours, but really like, we've come so far. All you have to do is wait. Give it 24 hours, it's gonna be awesome. I have some that I made yesterday. I'm gonna get my pan hot while we portion our meatballs. There we go. And I'm gonna fry them in some grapeseed oil. I like kind of a lot. I'm gonna get nice crisp and crackly, like a quarter inch. I know, wild, but it's gonna be worth it, guys. It's gonna be worth it. So you can use a quarter cup measure to portion these or just your hands, but I love using this disher. This is about a quarter cup. And the first thing I'm gonna do is portion it and then I'm gonna go back and roll them out, get them nice, smooth, 
Um, so once you portion these out, you can totally freeze them on the tray just like this when they get nice and hard, pop them in a bag, and then throw them in the oven. You can cook them from frozen. If you are cooking them from frozen, I wouldn't fry them like this because they'll splatter too much, but they'll be great roasted in the oven. Just brush them with some oil, throw them under the broiler, get some good color on there. This is a good thing to have like prepped. Because we have the panade, because we took the time to like emulsify it, it will still cook up nice and tender and moist and flavorful right out of the freezer. You know, it would be really fun too. You can take this exact same mixture and fry it into patties and make a really fun fish sandwich. Yeah, I'm into that. Now, I just wanna make these into nice smooth balls. So I'm gonna lightly damp my hands so it doesn't stick and we're gonna roll them. And you see how it just, it gets so pretty. Boom, smooth. So these are gonna be really delicate. So I like to flip them with a spoon. I found that if you get in there with tongs, you can really easily rip them up, especially in the beginning of cooking. They take a minute to firm up. Sorry, no, it's fine. I'm just rolling balls. I think this might be ready to go. We wanna, we wanna go with it nice and hot and shimmery so the meatballs don't fall apart. So I'm gonna put my little tester bit. Yeah, that's what we wanna hear. As soon as it hit, we got nice sizzles, but it wasn't like crazy sputtering. So you know it's not too hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and gently add my meatballs. So like I said, this is not tong time. These are delicate, tender, moist. We're gonna let it cook in one spot for a couple minutes and then like delicately rotate it so you can get as much browning all over as possible. Eat that one, he's not ready yet. If your meatball is sticking at all, like I just tried to move one and it was sticking, just let it keep going. It will release when it wants to release. You just have to listen to what your meatballs want. Don't really worry about internal temp. The panade makes these meatballs super forgiving. So instead, I like to focus on making sure I get nice color all the way around. You know the Calm app and how it's just like rain and leaves? They should do one with just sizzling meatballs. We have a cheap brown. Brown all around. I feel like the secret ingredient for every single one of my recipes is time, right? Like, take the time and brine your chicken wings. I always dry brine my wings. Take the time and scrape your paddle. I'm scraping the paddle, baby. Take the time and brown your meatballs all around. Look at how much turmeric it is. It's like staining the towels. This would make my mom unhappy, but I like it. Okay, brown town. Just like any other time when you cook meat, you don't wanna dive right in, so I'm gonna let these meatballs rest for five minutes and the texture's gonna get really nice, super moist. I'm gonna start by tasting the cod balls. You could just eat them as a lettuce wrap or over rice or with noodles, but I really like them in a summer roll. to do this, you can just have it with rice, but this is this is fun. All right, I'm going in. A little bit of sauce. Mm. The meatballs are a little bit spicy, but all those crunchy veg and herb really cool you off. I love the crunch of the vegetables. You get the chewy wrap and then the meaty meatballs. So many fun textures, bright flavors, and this sauce adds a lot of acid, sweetness, richness, like everything you need. So tasty. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm? For the lamb meatballs, you can have them over rice in a lettuce wrap. My favorite way is in a pita. This is portable now, right? Take your meatballs on the go. <laughs> you can really taste the spices. My favorite thing is that little bit of cinnamon in the back. You don't see it coming. The first thing you get is the cumin and coriander and then, ooh, you're like cinnamon. 
The meatballs are nice and tender, but they have this crunchy exterior from the char we got on the grill pan. And then I love the freshness of the cucumbers, the tomatoes, the onions, and the creamy tahini sauce brings it all together. I really hope you guys try both of these meatballs or are just inspired to go forth and ball all of the meats. You could go off script with these however your heart desires. I think this would be great with shrimp, chicken, turkey, halibut, squid. Whoa. Get crazy, get creative. Just make sure you follow the rules, you know? You want a little bit of panade in there for moisture. Make sure you mix that meatball mix really well so it's nice and emulsified. Give it time to rest so that texture gets nice and springy and tender. And give it nice color, 360. Take your time. Go to Brown Town. These recipes are both on food52.com. Show me what you come up with and be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time here on Off Script with Sola. I, how many times have I said moist? in this episode. This is gonna be great for uh, SEO. I'm sure cod meatballs is what everyone's looking for.